Hello everyone and welcome to the 15th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be continuing on with our NS table view and basically we're going to learn how we can set or change values in our uh, NS table view and also remove those objects as well. So basically what we've got so far is uh, the ability to add objects into our table view. So it looks like this, we can basically hit the add button and of course we can't change those values and we can't remove those values. So that's what we're going to be learning about in this tutorial is how we can change and remove those values. So it's pretty simple actually, we only have two methods we have to implement. One is for our IB action method which will uh, remove the objects and the other is actually just a data source method that we can use to set the values. So let's first off work with the IB action to remove the objects. So uh, go up into your table view controller header file and it will say IB action remove ID sender. Copy and paste this into our uh, NS table view implementation. Or, so let's go ahead and paste that in there. And now we have to figure out how we're going to remove objects. So of course, uh, the difference between removing and adding objects is that usually when we add objects, we don't really care where we're placed as long as we're adding them into the table view. Whereas remove, you want to make sure that you're removing the right item. I mean, if you were on iTunes, you wouldn't want to remove a random song. So basically, uh, we have to figure out where we're selected. So to do this, there's a simple method we can use using our table view. We can say selected row. And that will simply return a, um, an NS integer. So with that, we can just say NS integer, and we'll store it in our row, and row will get the selected row. And again, from the last tutorial, NS integer is just an Apple implemented int, basically. It, uh, is just, it's smart depending on what environment you're on, but we don't have to worry about it again. NS integer, just a normal int. So, with that said, now we have to figure out how we're going to remove items in our NS Mutable Array. So, to do this, we just have to say list remove object at index, and we can say row. And of course, our row corresponds with what we have selected, but it also corresponds with the NS Mutable Array, uh, the index that we're at. So, with that said, uh, once we've removed that object, we have to re-notify our table view that we've made this change, and we just have to say reload data. So there we go, that's all we have to do, and uh, let's go check in and um, just hook up this action and check it out. So, go to our remove method in our table view controller and drag it to our button. Now we have that connection made, and let's test it out. So go ahead and run, and when this builds, we can see that when we add objects, we can then remove them. But then I want to notify you on something important. If we don't have anything selected and we hit remove, then we're going to run into a problem. And you'll basically see that this is trying to remove something at an index of negative 1. And you might be wondering, well, why would it be doing that? Well, if we don't have anything selected, um, basically it's not going to... Uh, remove anything, and what our uh, method for table view selected row is going to return, it's going to return a negative one if it doesn't find what it's, or if it, do, if it doesn't have anything selected. So we have to account for this, of course, so we can make a simple if statement just saying if row is not equal to negative one, then we will remove those objects. So basically, if there's nothing selected in our row, or we have nothing selected in our table view, we're not going to remove any items. So we can go ahead and test this out. If we try to add some objects and we try to remove, as you can see, everything still works fine, and we have no problems. So that's, that's that. Um, let's continue on with the changing of the values now. So we already have removing objects, but of course we want to be able to uh, change these values. So, um, if you look at this uh, method right here, you might actually be able to figure out uh, what the method is that we're going to use. But basically, if this one was able to uh, get the different values that are at those, uh, that are in our NS table view, and then put them into our table view, there's going to be another method for 
setting those values as well. So the method for this is table view set object value for table column row. And as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same as this method, except now we have set object value instead of just object value for table column. So if we're going to implement this, um, all we have to do is pretty much the exact same thing that we did here. And I'm just going to actually copy this over. I'm going to copy these first two lines over, and then I'll explain them. But basically what we're doing here is we're saying to our NS table view that, you know, we want to address a certain object that's at that index. So we're doing the same thing. We're getting the values that are in our NS table or our NS mutable array, and we want to change those specific values. So by doing uh, this right here, person, we're getting the object out of our NS mutable array list. So then once we get that object, now we are getting again the identifier like we did in the last tutorial, and that just gives us the key or the certain value that we want to change. So now, if we have all this information, and again, before we just used key value coding to retrieve the value or return the value at that given um, at that given object and for its given key. So if we were to do that before, that would return the object to the NS mutable array, or the NS table view rather, then this method is just going to try to set that value at that given index, or that given uh, value I should say. So basically if we're going to do this, if we already have our person and we know what key or the identifier that we're trying to address, then uh, basically this method is just going to pass in the object or whatever value it's trying to change. So with that said, we can just say p set value for key. And of course this is key value coding, so um, we already have our identifier right here which is going to act as our key. And this, again, is all from the last tutorial, basically. And then setting value, this method, the only difference between this one and that one, or this one and that one, is that uh, basically this is going to pass in the object or whatever value it's trying to change. So whenever we try to mess with some value, it's going to pass in the object that, uh, so when we type in some new word, whatever word we're trying to change or whatever that value is, it's going to pass it in with this object right here. And then that's the value that we want to set this uh, new, uh, or we want to set our variable in our NS mutable array to be. So we just want to say object, and that's all we want to uh, pass in. So again, just to recap this, basically all we're doing is our table view is going to pass in uh, the object or the value that it's trying to change. So it's passing in the new value. So whatever we type in, if we're trying to change a name to Sam or something, that's what this object is going to be as a value. It's just going to be an NS string of Sam. And then basically what we're trying to do from there is we're just going to figure out which item we are selected on. So to do that, of course, we're just getting the uh, person out of our NS mutable array, and then we're getting the identifier for whatever column we're in. And the last step is just to change that value that we got all up here. So again, key value coding, we're setting the object value for whatever key we have. The key is just the column, either name or age, and the object is just that value that we pass in, which is, in our case here, probably going to be Sam if we're changing the name to Sam. So that's um, all this is trying to do. And again, the important thing all about this is that all of our data is stored in that NS mutable array. So we really have to be changing those values. Uh, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're changing the person object in our NS mutable array. And that's, of course, what this method is doing. It, all it really is is passing in some value, letting us know that we should change whatever is in our NS mutable array to that value. So anyway, let's go ahead and test this out now. And since we already have our data source wired to our table view, as you can see right here, basically we can go ahead and run this. And we should be able to add objects, and we should be able to set them. So Sam, again, that was just the data source method that we just added. We should be able to change the age as well. And there's kind of some uh, weird things with this since we're using integers, but uh, we can talk about that in a later tutorial. Um, and you'll see if we remove this, we remove that Sam object specifically because that's what we were selected on. There is one more thing that I should note, though, that I found in uh, using these methods. If you go to select something like this and you leave it edited and then you go to remove it, you're actually going to have some kind of weird bug that shows up. 
And this actually happens even in Apple sample code. So, um, but anyway, I'm just going to show you how you can quickly fix this if you want to use data source methods. So to do this, you can actually just go to our remove method that we uh, made right here. And what basically is going on is if we're trying to edit this value, then if we're to remove this value, we can just say, well, stop editing, right? If the, if the problem comes with editing, let's just say stop editing. And we can do this by just saying table view abort editing. So there we go. That's actually just kind of my solution to this. Um, basically, if you know, if we're trying to remove an object, we aren't editing it anymore. So we'll just say abort editing, and right before we remove that object, that's what we'll do. So I don't really know uh, exactly what the big problem is with this or why it happens, but you'll see that when we go to change this or run this now, add a bunch of things, and if we go to edit it, you'll see that it still works. So anyway, uh, that's my solution to that problem. And again, this is just kind of like some debugging things that you should always do with your programs. Test, test the limits of it. Make sure that it works um, to its fullest. So anyway, this is um, all the information that I wanted to give you for NS Table Views and data source methods. And I'm sure we'll have a few more tutorials on this as well, uh, not on data source probably, but we'll have uh, many more methods on Cocoa Bindings coming up. And then uh, we'll be seeing our friend, the NS Table View, once again. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, just to recap what we did, we added an IB action for our remove method. And we added a data source method, which enabled us to set the values at the uh, certain NS Mutable Array object. And again, it was using key value coding. So anyway, that's what we did in this tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment if you have any questions, though. Please click on some ads if you're feeling nice. And I will see you next tutorial.